A man accused of shooting a federal agent outside of a Spokane motel earlier this month could spend the rest of his life in prison. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crim 2 News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney is off tonight. Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk was in federal court where the suspect faced new charges today. He is live in the newsroom tonight to explain what happened. Kyle? Randy Holmes appeared over video from the Spokane County Jail. He's still recovering from a gunshot wound to the chest. A grand jury indicted Holmes on three separate charges. Those include assaulting a federal agent with a deadly weapon and being in possession of a gun as a convicted felon. Now, according to court documents, the undercover ATF agent planned to meet with Holmes for an illegal gun sale outside the Motel 6 off Sunset Boulevard. There were reports of gunshots, and when officers responded to the scene, they found Holmes with multiple gunshot wounds. The ATF agent was also hit but treated and released from the hospital. Now, if convicted, Holmes could be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Today, his cousin and other family members sat in federal court to support him. Holmes thanked them at the end of his appearance. His family declined to be interviewed. Mark. Kyle, thank you very much. Tonight we are learning of a possible intentional car crash at Pacific and Brown earlier today. Police say two women were in an argument when one of them started walking north on Brown Street. The other woman then drove this vehicle right here on the wrong, the wrong way on that same street, hitting the woman that she was arguing with and then hitting that concrete structure. Police say the woman hit by the car is badly hurt. Both have been sent to the hospital for evaluation. Spokane police do expect criminal charges for the driver in this case. They ask anyone who witnessed the collision and has not talked with investigators to call crime check right there at the bottom of your screen. Well, a teen is in the hospital and a dog has been killed after a shooting in North Spokane today. That shooting happened at the North Cliff Terrace Apartments on West Cora Avenue earlier this morning. No arrests have been made at this time. Police did confirm the shooting does not appear to be random and the teen is expected to be okay. In the meantime, if you have any information on this shooting that you think could help, you are urged to call Crime Check, that number right there at the bottom of your screen. A man is facing felony charges for shooting off a gun at the Kootenai County Fairgrounds over the weekend. Daniel Cathcart allegedly fired off two shots into the ground after an altercation between a woman and a group of men in the parking lot. The woman reported being chased to her car by the group and being prevented from closing her car door by one of them. And that's when Cathcart approached with a rifle in his hand. Witnesses say Cathcart pointed his gun at one man. Police found a rifle and multiple boxes of ammunition in his car. Cathcart has been charged with two counts of aggravated assault. Prosecutors filed a deadly weapon enhancement in the case. Panic. My first thing was to go run after him and I did. I, I ran, I grabbed the door handle on the um, passenger side, screaming, stop, well, like, well, you're stealing my car. The victim of a carjacking is speaking for the first time after a man stole her car in broad daylight, dragging her down the street in the process. Arena Stampa was delivering groceries in North Spokane when she heard her car door slam. She chased after the car, trying to stop the man from driving away, as you can see. Well, she still has cuts on her arm from being then dragged. She was able to call police with the help of an app. They were able to track that car block by block until finally it ended with that carjacking suspect, Bobby McBride, crashing the car and then running from the scene, leaving behind a personal backpack. Here's that crash right here with his documents in that backpack. So it wasn't long before he was caught. The victim says she has learned from this incident. It literally was a split second and lesson learned <laughs> after this incident. I'm more aware of my surroundings. The suspect McBride was in court Tuesday where we learned that he is a nine time convicted felon and was released from prison just a week before the alleged carjacking. He's now in jail on a $100,000 bond. Well, this is a semi truck that got trapped just last week on Trent and Napa. If you live in Spokane, you know this is a common sight. And for you, large trucks getting stuck under the bridges, blocking the road and then backing up traffic, causing headaches for drivers and for police. Well, now Spokane has a new solution to warn those semi drivers before they make that miscalculation and then get stuck. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley is live tonight with more on that simple solution to prevent those stuck trucks. Amanda. 
trucks have been hitting this viaduct here at Sprague and Division for several years now. So the city of Spokane installed these yellow plastic chimes in hopes that they could be a solution to the problem. Now the city installed the plastic chimes in as part of its recent prog uh, as, uh, progress um, here on Sprague Avenue. They said they got the idea from San Antonio, Texas. Now the how it works is if a truck hits the chimes, it'll make a loud noise warning the driver that it's their truck is too high and will not clear the bridge. Now coming back out live here, the city has two different sets of these chimes. The one here right on East Sprague. There's also another one on a side street at Pines and Sprague. Again, to alert those drivers of whether they're going to make it to that bridge or not. Now the city does say they don't currently have plans to add any more of these chimes, so we'll keep an eye on that if plans do develop. Reporting in East Sprague, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Amanda, thank you very much. It'll be interesting to see how those work. We'll keep you posted. All right, let's turn our attention to weather now because we could be seeing snow in the next couple of days. Let's get straight to meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Outdoor Weather Center. And Thomas, the temperature is dropping. It's now just 32 degrees out there. As it was yesterday as well. And we know that last night it went from this at 5 o'clock at night down to 20 degrees from this morning. It won't be quite as cold later on tonight and tomorrow morning because we are getting some cloud cover overhead. So that should actually stabilize our temperatures mainly in the upper to mid 20s for low temperatures. All this is because we have a weather system that's a approaching from the west. That will be the snowmaker, but not tonight. We are just going to be uh, standard cold for this evening, about in the mid 20s, as you might expect. The snow arrives tomorrow evening, and this could be our first measurable snowfall of the year. Yesterday's grapple and snow showers was a trace, so it happened, but it didn't stick to the ground. I think some sticking snow or slushy snow possible and all these blue shaded areas up to an inch or more in some locations, and we're going to be detailing just when the snow is expected to arrive and what the rain snow situation will be all through this time frame heading into Thursday night. All right, we'll check back in with you later in the broadcast. Thomas, thank you very much. The In the Northwest is booming and our ongoing series is tracking all the growth in our area. Tonight we have an update on hundreds of new jobs coming to Spokane. At a groundbreaking ceremony today, Jubilant Hollister Steer announced it is adding more than 200 jobs. It's part of a $92 million expansion to the company's North Spokane manufacturing plant. The company makes vaccines and other sterile injectables. They are the only manufacturer of the COVID-19 vaccines here in the state of Washington. This expansion should increase capacity by 50%, they said, and bring new cutting-edge technology to our area. This will be a truly world-class state of our technology in terms of manufacturing vaccines and biologics products. You can walk in almost any, any company in the world. We would look maybe on par or better than that once we build, up, build this facility. If you're looking for a job, the company says it is already hiring. Well, earlier this week, it was announced that expired COVID vaccines had been administered right here in Spokane. Coming up after the break, we are verifying how many were given and what are the possible effects of getting an expired vaccine. Plus, the Spokane Regional Health District wants to add more health care and it expects community members 